to be praised. Your hunger for God is not in vain. One writer said, your labor is not in vain. When you have a desire to seek after God, sooner or later, blessings are going to manifest. God, I'm talking to somebody. Somebody that held on. Somebody that didn't quit doing the right thing. And God bless you for your steadfastness. Oh, yeah. I didn't, I didn't get to where I am overnight. It took some enduring. It took... God, I'm preaching right up in here. You have to know that, that your hunger is not in vain. Listen, despite how it may look. Because sometimes with the natural eye, it looks as if what I'm doing is not paying off. But you have to know that it will pay off if you continue in it. So I have to, I have to hunger. But, but again, we live in a time that, that, that a lot of folk hunger for God is diminishing. Folks are backsliding left and right. They're, they're being pulled back into things that they know is going to destroy them. Mm, all of us know folk that are, that, that are allowing things to cause them to go backwards rather than them moving forward or being progressive and so we have to be careful notice what Jesus said I like how Jesus said it in Matthew the 24th chapter notice that real quickly if you will notice Matthew and the 24th chapter you 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 have to guard your heart and your mind in the time that we live in in well, some of you know I'm right, boy. Some of you, it just takes soon as you get to your job. You, you realize that it's going to be a fight to keep your mind stayed on God because you got so many sinners around you. Come on, somebody. Now, some of us, our battle is at the house. We, we've got to go back and, and be among people that, that ain't studying our God. we got to be around folk that don't care that we pray, folk that don't care that we say and we say. Come on, somebody. And so sometimes it is a battle it is a challenge to keep your mind stayed upon God and to have the right mindset despite what you're going through and I tell you I wish somebody had taught this to me when I was a babe in God mm. I needed this type of teaching when you're coming into into Christianity when you obey you need to know that that sometimes you, you're going to have to really work at keeping your mind on the right thing because there are different things that attack your mind come on here somebody you know I got your number this morning you say pastor I got a mind to do right yeah Sunday morning that's your Sunday morning mind but that's not your Friday night, man. <laughs> Anybody ever wish you could just keep the mindset that you got right now throughout the week? I, I, I'm past, I'm thinking holy right now. Yeah, I know you in church. <laughs> but notice, it is, it's a, it's a war. Because notice what Jesus said in Matthew 24. In verse 12, this is important. He said, and because of lawlessness, and because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. See, a lot of folk are affected by the world. See, notice he said, because lawlessness will abound or be on the rise. The love of many or the hunger for many will wax cold. And you actually have folk right now, if the truth be told, that they don't hunger for the things of God the way they used to. You're no longer excited about prayer the way that you used to be excited about praying. You're no longer excited about giving the tithe and, and the offering in the manner that you used to be. For a lot of you, even coming to church is a struggle all the time now. And so, so the love of many 
He said it's going to wax cold. People are not going to have a hunger for the things of God. And tell your neighbor, if it be true, tell him if you believe like I believe, tell him I'm seeing it right now. We see it when we look on TV. We see it when we just look at how people treat God or how they view the word of God. Folk that used to stand firm on what thus saith the word are now wavering when it comes to what God said we should do versus what he said we shouldn't do. And so that's reason it's so necessary for a preacher to let people know that God has not changed his mind in reference to holiness. Ah, oh, didn't get that many claps. He has not changed his mind in reference to his people being a holy people, a people devoted unto him, a people devoted to only worshiping him, a people devoted to having him first no matter what. You know the reason a lot of us ain't clapping? Our love for God is diminishing. Some of you used to praise God no matter what you went through. And now it's as if you come to church and you want folk to beg you to praise. You want folk to beg you to clap. They got to beg you to dance. They got to beg you to get up out of that seat. But you used to magnify God. But now your love is growing cold. And a lot of us that were at one point on fire for God, we are now lukewarm saints. I can have church or I don't have to have church. I need God, but on the other hand, I done got myself a good job too. With some benefits. I'm keeping it real because this is just the time that we're living in. Whether love for a lot of folk toward God or the things of God is simply growing cold. And when that happens, if you're in the right church, God is going to deal with his people. But now if you're in a church where the pastor is sinning, where leaders are not living nothing, you may or may not hear a word like this. But when things are not going the manner that God desires for them to go, he will often deal with the house prophet so that he can speak to the people of God. And that's what God is doing this morning. He, he's talking to us in reference to our love for him. And many of us, we've got to get back to that place where God is number one. We got to get back to that place where we got to have God. We got to get back to that place where we got to be in the presence of God. We've got to get back to that place where we love striving to please our God. Despite the fact that it may upset man, you got to so desire to please your God. That when it is contrary to what man says, that don't bother you. Hold on, sit down. Because the word says that straight and narrow is the way that's going to lead to God or to heaven. But broad is the way that leads to destruction. And many there be that go that way. See, we actually live in a time now where it's not popular to be on fire for God. Hold on. It's popular to be churchy. It's popular to be phony. But loyalty to Jesus and him only, church is getting weak now. You even got saints that are looking for weak churches, looking for places to worship where they won't be held accountable, looking for places to worship where they won't be rebuked, where they can live any kind of way. Oh, I'm on this thing. But notice back in Luke 6, notice this. And many of us 
you, you got to heed what I'm saying because you got to get that love back for God. You got to get that hunger back for God so that he can turn your life around. You got to get that hunger back for God so that he can work out the things that are going wrong that you can't work out. You got to get that hunger back for God so that he can go ahead and send you the deliverance that he wants to send you. You got to get back to hunger after the things of God so that God can go ahead and pull you up out of that pit that you've fallen into. But if you do not God you're going to continue to sink lower and lower and lower and lower when you don't have to you got to get that hunger back high five two people and tell them get that hunger back get that hunger back Mm, yeah, I need you to preach that to two or three four. Tell them, get your hunger back. Uh, yeah, just tell somebody, if you done lost it, this is your Sunday to get your hunger back. If you're no longer on fire, this is the Sunday that you can leave this church back on fire for your God, back in the place that you need to be. But notice what Jesus began to say. Because, again, he's speaking to his Disciples, notice verse 20, then he lifted up his eyes toward his disciples. Now listen, because this is important. A disciple has to do with two things. First, from a literal standpoint, a disciple is a learner. A learner or a pupil is somebody who positions him or herself to learn. The will and the word of God. I, I am a, I'm a learner now. I don't just come to church just to come. But I come to learn about the things of God. I come to receive knowledge and understanding that will change or transform my life for the better. So a disciple has to do with a, a learner. But, but, but biblically speaking, a disciple is an adherent follower of Jesus the Christ. Someone who sticks or clings to the teachings or the sayings of Jesus. See, if you are a disciple, a lot of stuff that you hear in our day and time that folk call good but is actually evil, when you're really a disciple, you ain't going along with that mess. You say, away oh, with that, that's crazy. That goes against what my Lord taught. That goes against the Bible. That goes against what the Word says. And so when you're an adherent follower, you are going to stick again to the Word of God, no matter how popular something may be. You're going to follow the Word or the will of God. Now notice this also because when you look in Acts 11 and 26, the word disciple is synonymous with the word Christian. A Christian and a disciple are one in the same. A, dis a Christian is a Christ-like person. It's someone who has submitted their will over to the will of Jesus. And now they're no longer their own. They recognize they've been bought with a price. And so a lifestyle change has to take place if you're really a disciple. If you are a disciple, you are not doing what you used to do. You are changing. You're progressing. You're, you're transforming for the better. Why? I'm a disciple now. Places I used to go. Guess what? Don't go down no more. The way I used to talk. Guess what? Don't talk like that no more. You used to curse, don't curse no more. You used to lie all the time. But I am getting that under control. <laughs> Is that better for some of y'all? If I don't say I don't lie no more, some of y'all. <laughs> but there's a change. Listen to me good. Because that's what's wrong in our day and time. Folk claim to be Christian, but there's no change. Say they are Christian, but they're not keeping the sayings of Jesus. They're not acting the part. 
And guess what? They here this morning. This church finna get real quiet. Or quieter. I don't care what he say. I know I'm saved. When you say, we're going to see fruit. Tell your neighbor, it's not that I'm a fruit inspector, but I should see some. You know, you got some folks, they, they act like they've been chosen to be the fruit inspectors. And they busy watching everybody else. And they know where everybody else slipping, but can't see where they. Y'all don't mind if I preach to these fruit inspectors, do it. These folk that can tell you when you wrong, but can't receive it when you tell them they wrong. Folk that can show you they sin, but can't deal with their own sin. Folk that try to clean up your house when their house a mess. Folk trying to counsel you when they marriage jacked up. Sit down, I ain't going to preach on them fruit inspectors. 